today we are going to be cutting the steerer tube on four and a half thousand pound bike something you do not want to get wrong so this is how we do it first of all this bike has just finished its bike fit we know exactly where we are going to cut it all of this has been properly compressed first thing we do is we need to mark it using a sharp pick the park tool picks are fantastic for this keep them sharp and we're just going to score a line around here it needs a bit of pressure so if you use your thumb and brace it you can just score them line in there once we've done that we need to disassemble again so now we put a lot of masking tape on stuff so we keep all of these brake hoses away from the customer while they're trying to do their bike fit luckily these polymer bars are actually fairly easy to internally root so i am going to remove the entire fork for this sometimes bars can be such a pain that it's easier just to try and cut everything in situ that's probably for another video <laughs> so what we've got here is our little score line we need to make sure that we account for the little compression rung that's going to go on the top and these are going to be normally about two millimeters this one like 1.98 and we also want to account for the little gap that we're going to need to compress those bearings so that's going to be another two millimeters so what I do is I set my calipers here to around four and a half millimeters and then using the sharp bits of here we take that line that we had before I'm going to put another score line don't have to be deep because then I'm going to use masking tape now the reason I use tape is because as you cut the opportunity of like cutting through the carbon, you can just sort of splinter some of it off. So if you put some tape on it, it just supports it. And when you wrap this, you wrap right up until that second line and you need to make sure everything is perpendicular. So it should wrap round, make a perfect thing. Keep it, see how sort of tight I'm wrapping this. Edge of that masking tape is then gonna be our cut line. Have park tool saw guide. Can't say these are the best things in the world. What I'm gonna do is Take the saw. Now, these are actually carbide tip. They're probably good for about 20 or 30 cuts after they've got to replace them, but they're like a grit as opposed to a cutting edge. So they're more abrasive. Now you can get the ones from Part Tour. You can also get them from hardware stores. And what I'm trying to do here is get, use my edge of my saw to line up with the edge of my masking tape. So that is the edge of the masking tape. And that is where my saw guide sits just there. Then we're going to need a proper mask these are filters that we can change quite easily and this is just a squeezy bottle full of soapy water soapy water what we're trying to do is keep all the dust down and then a bit of blue roll that we're basically going to use try and keep all that dust down give everything a bit of a squirt this is also basically a lubricant as well so when we start our cut to make sure that all this is out of the way and we're going to try and start nice and easy and rather than just going in one direction i'm also going to just angle it slightly is going to help keep it straight all the way. So keep everything wet. Keep this out of the way. I've got to say, Park, this is the worst design ever having this in the way of this saw. But I hope we'll replace this if we find a better one. There we go. That's how that is looking right now. Now, as I get close to the end, just going to change the angle of my saw, come at it slowly, and if I can, just hold on to this. Use your left hand if you can. There we go, we should have a nice clean cut. Use your cloth and gather up all of the dust. And from here, I take this right over to the sink and wash over all that dust so leave mask on until all of this is tidied up and most importantly clean down your tools so saw and this will go in the wash because what you don't want is all of this just lying around the workshop okay so there is our cut it's probably not perfectly straight i'm just going to use a headset spacer now these ones have actually got a little o-ring on the inside so quite a tight fit perfect for this so if i just show you a close-up of that it's pretty good but not quite there. So we need to do a little bit of hand finishing. Gloves on, and the first thing, I'm just gonna keep that headset in place. I'm just gonna take off, I mean, it is so close. Now with time steerers, it's actually Kevlar woven into this. Now if you sand in one way, what you'll do, you'll fray the edge of the, the Kevlar fibers. So what you wanna do is sand all in one direction. 
And we're just gonna put a slight taper onto this so you can see how I'm just going one direction only. If you wanna fit your bung and just check if you see any gaps, now's the time to sort that out. It's probably the tiniest little bird just there. Doesn't take much, this is 180 grit. There we go. Once you're done, clean it all down and importantly, dry it all off. And again, with time steerers especially, make sure you haven't got any little um, threads of Kevlar showing. If you have, just go back and just sand those off. Now, you can see that we have already uh, taped all of this down. We've taped it in such a way it's not crooked because on the in the UK, we want this to come out to our front brake on our right hand side. So keep that over there, keep that over there. And then our compression ring. Don't rely on that compression ring holding it. It looks pretty steady, but you can still drop. What I'm gonna do, make sure we don't hit the ceiling, but just hold it there so it doesn't unthread. And then we've got some more cable routing. These polymer bars are actually quite simple. You're probably only going to need a, uh, a pick to run this through. So again, working with the, the curve, run that round. What we're looking for, you go too far with the cable and then you just pull it back and you should just be able to pick it up with the pick. And with this 90 degree pick, you basically put it in the end of the hose and then just feed it through. Let's build our spacers back up again. Now we go with the thickest spacer at the bottom. So one of the things I like about these polymer bars is that they do actually do a two and a half millimeter spacer as well. Let's just set all that down. So we've got our top cap, make sure we grease this. Don't grease the, the friction parts, it's just a bit that's gonna corrode really. And the other important thing is top cap, definitely good practice to grease this as well. What we're looking for is enough to take all that compression out, but we're still looking for free rotation of the bearings. I'm not gonna go into this too much, but the important thing from here is to try and set your cable lengths so that you get a full rotation of the uh, the bar. So it's worth just putting the bars around to one side and just letting those cables settle where you want them so that your hair steering returns to center. And that's it. Nice neat setup. Got the right gap for the right amount of compression. Now the boring bit, let's connect all the brake hoses up. Maybe that's for another video. So key points from the video then, keep everything really clean. Make sure you use some masking tape. Use that as your cutting guide. Be slow, be precise. Check the cup before you go. If you're using 180 grit sandpaper, you'll be surprised how quickly you can take off uh, material. So even if you cut it a little bit too long, you need to reduce it. You can probably sand away, you know, a millimeter, two millimeters easier than you can go back and cut, uh, believe it or not, because it really doesn't take very long with 180 grit. So be careful with that. And just slowly, take your time, keep everything clean, look after your tools, you should be golden. Hope you found this video useful. Till next one, take it easy.